what is up hot dog people i uh, am grateful. i am very grateful actually to, to continue to be here and he made a couple of mentions of what we're building how we're building and where we're going so this is the tick talk so this is the first joke it won't be the last so please bear with me i'll keep it as high energy as humanly possible um first off i need i do need to check there was some tech issues before how do i sound i invested way too much into a mic if it sounds bad i'm getting a refund so please give me a hot dog if you can hear me just to make sure that we are on the right zoom in any other comments that'd be great so i'm gonna i'm gonna bear with you guys for a second make sure everything's moving okay i see some hot dogs there from existing so i assume that people can see me so i digress let's jump into it let me start my timer just to make sure that i stay on point with everybody here and uh here we go I love the space. The space has given me everything. The space has literally been able to, to give me purpose, been able to kind of feed my family and move me into a, in a home that I love here in Orange County, California. Uh, and we've been able to build that with a team called Structured. So we were just social. Now we are kind of all things um, as we continue to grow. Crazy, crazy story. Um, but it's uh, for a different time because right here, we're here to learn about TikTok. So from Structured to Constant to Geek Out, I, I love this space. The space has given me everything. Um, and when I look back at why it's giving me everything. It's because of the honesty that I in this space. And so uh, nothing's going to be different. The rest of the team here have been so, so kind to me and they've been able to, to give me a platform. So I never take it for granted. And I always want to bring some new controversial conversations. So this is a little bit more different. Uh, this is a little bit more honest. I, I don't think I would do this in public, I, but I feel safe here behind the screen. So you guys are all ready for it. Uh, TikTok is really fucking hard, super fucking hard. Like this is not a joke. I think as an agency building the TikTok space, we have access to a lot of things, um, more brands, more testing, higher volume that oftentimes an internal brand or maybe a smaller team might not have access to. And I think it's important to highlight that, especially when you have stuff that you can continually share. That to me is very, very intense and very, very valuable. So what we did for this presentation was we went back and we, we paid a lot of money. Um, both on the ad side, both on the conversation side, both on the consulting side, just to make sure we're we're doing this. Because it, look, it's fairly new. Not a lot of people are diving into this. I think a lot more people started to take it serious when we were in this post iOS phase. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa Facebook, Instagram, this, this stuff is happening. Cookie list world with Google. How does TikTok play into it? And and I'm I'm a little bit bummed, right? I don't think TikTok did what it needed to do. But regardless, we do have some shit that we want to send with you guys. So I have 18 minutes to cover this, and I'm going to be covering a core area around the time that we invest into it, the amount of interviews, the amount of money that we spent into it to play to a place where I feel confident in sharing with you guys. If you are thinking about spending, if you're already spending, if you want to have conversations with your media buyer, maybe you want to have conversations with your agency, maybe you want to talk about this internally. Uh, I think we have a, a good group. buckle up. This is the trip that we're all going on together. I got six minutes about non-negotiables. What got us to this point? Some thought process to make sure we're all on the same page. Our proprietary, super unique and different crap system that you guys can take and then some structures and strategies so you can get a little tactical here towards the end so bear with me i got time to to power on through this stuff question for the audience i just want to make sure that everybody knows it who knows who knew what uh TikTok used to be called any guesses any guesses before i go into the next slide what about this maybe this gives a little bit of help for you guys to understand musically this is what it used to be called how about if we went back to china and see like what was the the original platform call back there you might see a little bit of uh, foreshadowing into what it looks like today. Do Yin, right? So super, super unique, different different angle to how this is going against. Um, Jake Hoffman, good guess. There it is. Yes, I went too soon. So there's a little bit of lag in the conversation. So if I go too quick, I apologize, but I will get all the questions back. But I got it up on my screen. But Do Yin, and where we started to pay attention was right around this like 2020, 2021 phase. Because if you look at the overall avenue, annual revenue that, that TikTok was starting to drive for itself, kind of happened after this man went a little bit crazy and look he say what you will say whatever is going to happen he brought a lot of eyes to it which look arguably we're dealing with this right now right there's a lot of this call to a ban there's a bill in the state there's a lot of different conversations going on here and it drove a significant amount of revenue it got a lot of interest right p not all uh, pr is bad pr and it drove a lot of annual investment towards this platform even us right we we felt like well we are behind how do we invest in that both as an agency and the brands that we support i think it it's time and safe for us to say that it does require a look at it and this is up to the end of this is up to march of 2022 so this back half of the content is not fully updated but it paints a picture of this entire last year of 
although it's nowhere near Facebook spend or even some Google spend, it is still pulling some spend that is ne uh, necessary for us to think about new channels, right? New channels of growth, new channels of opportunity. Uh, and I definitely think it's worth building out the right infrastructure if you're thinking that your brand, your product, your, your offer could work there. So definitely important, worth looking at because most of the people there want to shop. So reported from, from TikTok, so take it for, for how you will. Uh, about 71% overall believes that people are interested in buying. 40% are ready to buy. So not just window shopping over here, but ready to buy is close to close to half. And the final percentage, the amount of searches that happen on this area. And I, for one, I was a consumer of TikTok until I realized I was blowing hours. And this unfortunate situation where I can tell your, your screen time, oh man, very rough. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just living there. And so I have structured time and how I'm consuming content. And thankfully, I have a lot of people on my team that can kind of show me what's happening and where it's happening. So when you look at the type of people that are on this, Gen Z is still primarily the, the users here, which thinking about the economic state that the Gen Z is in, are they spending their parents' money? Or do they have their own money? It's hard to tell, but it is a, a, a lion's share of the consumers. Then you go into the overall millennials of what's happening here. I do think that there are us, like I'm a, I'm a 90s kid, this millennial, we are in an area where we have the economics, somewhat economic stability and purchasing power still there. And then finally, Gen X, they're on there, right? They might not be coming in droves and they might, be, they might not know how to use the platform itself, but they are definitely um, spending time on this stuff, which leads me into a third of the all, all the content, consumer-based. Look on like these other channels where they're used to seeing product, maybe some product on white, maybe some just graphics or moving images of product itself. Not so much, right? You're looking and dealing with humans on this platform almost exclusively. And so for, for looking at the feed and the type of content that gets featured on the For You feed, it is all CGC or customer generated content, right? Kind of moving away from that user generated content to that customer generated content, because that's who we want to uh, focus on, which for me, this is the number one diagram that I have, as you see the majority, more than the minority. But how this looks and applies for TikTok is, the creative focus is the majority of the time and effort and focus it should be on, which is the, arguably the hardest part because it takes team, it takes process, it takes time, it takes cash. Um, and overall, the media buying is, is a little bit more simplified, which is why a lot of us on the agency side or even us on the larger team stuff, structure feel good about, feel really confident in running the strategies because it's something that people can hand a playbook to more or less. And there's no, granted, there's no best practices overall. I think that we, we feel good about where we would want to start but there are more work to be done on the content side, which we'll, we'll spend a lot of time in this, especially talking about our craft system. So what it stands for is the creative itself, the research, the accumulation of that content, and then overall the performance. So it is a real acronym. I didn't just make this up. Ah, I, I lied, I lied, I made this up. But it, you will never forget it, I promise you, with all the content you have today. I wanted to make sure that this stood up for you guys. Um, and so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of our process now. I think we're probably in version 2.3 of many more to come of how we're iterating it and shooting this. But the easiest framework that I wanna play with is when we're thinking about content generally, it's gonna always stick with that audience versus creative. Because again, we're trying to sell to the person that we wanna show in the content. So if the person in the content looks like the person we're trying to sell to, we know we have a great audience versus creative match. Then we go into the clear conversion path, which I don't have too many slides on this because I don't wanna to go too heavy on the actual strategy of execution. I wanna spend a lot of time on the team needed and the processes behind that. But it is important to know that because of TikTok's instant pages and the use of the quality and understanding the quality of traffic coming from TikTok, which I have a little bit of talk on that. Generally speaking, the, the quality of content, the quality of consumers coming from TikTok aren't always a heavy buyer intent, kind of like what we see on Google or, or even what we see on Facebook and Instagram. So you do got to do a little bit of validating, which they've done a great job with the, the instant pages and even putting an advertorial or some sort of sell sales page right after that instant page could be a benefit in, in convincing them to buy, which is great. And then lastly, volume of testing. So understanding the creative element and making sure that we get the right amount of time and effort around the volume of testing is extremely, extremely important. And we have some general baseline. So if you take um, a little bit of a pivot to understand, this is the non-negotiables. I believe strongly in this, our team believes strongly in this. Stop this goal within two seconds. Nothing new. That hook overall is the most important on TikTok. The, the time spent on, uh, on, on the platform itself is meant to keep you on that platform. So we got to convince them to get off. So that, that two second hook, I'd even argue one second. I don't even know what's, if it's possible to pull something in as aggressive as one second, but it is needed. So those of us that feel very confident in the type of content that they make, 
they find out and do very well within this hook area. Quick shots and new scenes, product every three to five seconds. The jump cuts are so important on this one. I have some examples of, of ads that we've we've seen in the life and it's so so unique but much different than what we've seen overall now you're probably a little bit accustomed to it if you spend time on reels but i think shooting for tiktok and applying to reels is a good process versus reels to tiktok for for whatever reason we haven't seen the same love the other way and lastly call to action almost the entire time not necessarily at the end but telling them specifically what you need them to do because the demographic does skew to be a little bit younger not dumber just younger we have six core so the unboxing step by step some demos and overall remixes and then lastly some reverse story and, and trend fall so i'm going to show you one specifically right here so i'm going to pause for a second let this play and then we'll kind of break this down live together so volume adjustment i'm giving you guys fair warning i don't know how loud it'll be for you sorry to blow your eardrums out in three two one i've been all over TikTok and they finally arrived. So today we're going to be reviewing the famous pillow slides. I got two different colors, the cream and the baby blue, and they are super cute. These are actually the first slides I own. So I wasn't familiar with the material, but as soon as I put them on, they were super comfortable. And not just that, they weigh absolutely nothing, which is amazing. And here are some outfit ideas that look good with the slides, but honestly, anything looks good with them. And you can find them in my bio. So I liked, I liked a lot of this. So there's some things that I probably would have changed. I probably would have put some more on platform or sorry, I think that's really important. I think they missed it a little bit here, but generally it hit all three of these areas. Show me the product, give me a little bit of the benefits, how light they are, how trendy they are, how easy they are to kind of fit. Didn't talk about pricing, which I would have wanted them to do in this situation. Um, and a lot of cut-ups, right? If you weren't able to count that with snaps or count that with the amount of time, it's fantastic. So one great one. This one, this is one of my favorite creators. You guys got to, this, this is just pure entertainment. So uh, I think he did a great job of, of doing some following trends of um, overall conversation. So bear with me. Yo, it's madness out there. What's going on out there? Man, I can't leave the house without women swarming me. It's getting really annoying. Oh my God, that's horrible. How can I also have that problem? Okay, it all began when I started ordering from Scentbird. Scentbird? What's that? Scentbird is a monthly fragrance subscription company. They carry over 500 authentic scents like Tommy Bahama, Gucci Guilty, and Dolce and & Gabbana. And they come in these eight milliliter tubes that last for about a month. Well, I liked it. I think he went a little bit more into the salesy section of things, which is not, I, I don't hate it because he did it. He did kind of delight me with that little back and forth dialogue. Super effective way of doing it. And he, again, if you follow his his page, he has so many of these. And uh, I, I truly, truly enjoy him and appreciate his comment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a screen. I'm going to pull out of this one real quick just to show you guys another one that I really, really like. So one second. Okay, and so there is no sound for this. So there's no sound for this overall. But I want to show this is a trend that's going on. So I'm going to back it up right here. And so you can see that this overprint, this is everywhere. And I, I think so many people are not leveraging as much as they should be. So the background is just music. I know you can't hear it because it's not embedded. I could watch this for hours. I don't know. Satisfying thing really hits home for me. I, I always like satisfying stuff. Um, so it was interesting for me to to start to consume this type of content because I liked it. I know I know for a fact that this satisfying carry doesn't feel like an ad. It feels confident. People are going to spend the time you're going to get your reviews through. Uh, and, and I think it does a, a fantastic job of execution overall. And I think I got one more for you guys too. That client to the bottom of my eye. Look at these dark circles. Okay, I'm only a little dab right here. Get a little massage. I feel like how the eucalyptus. That's it. It feels like I'm like, like a little cup of coffee for my eyes. Like I'm just like, <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, I'm you awake. Yeah, I feel like. That client to the bottom of my eye. And entertaining. I stuck with it the entire time. I like what he was doing. Didn't really even kind of call it out. And so you can kind of get away with just providing quality content. And then this is, this is probably the last one I have of, of this type of content. So again, following trends and cut ups. Why is Posh Peanut all my baby wears? They have the absolute cutest prints. 
They use like bamboo, so they're beyond soft. They drop new collections every week. So I I know that the play, the the robot voice is a little played out in the sense, but the biggest biggest call out here is leveraging the trend. So that music was trending at the time. Right. And you remember where this platform came from. It was musically. People were known for the music, dancing, an iteration of new content, finding new music, finding discovery around this. And so tapping into that algo, if you can play around it, either whether it's organic or whether it's the ad itself, really does and goes. And this isn't anything new or any groundbreaking, but I think the way that you apply this type of content towards uh, TikTok is important. So here's the situation. So this is our ALO framework. Everybody knows about this avatar angle ad landing offer. This is the graduation phase of making sure that the ad to the page to the conversion is extremely congruent for the customer. But think about this. So you have after she's a single mom in her thirties with a career. The angle monthly subscription snack box allows her to make her kids healthy, delicious lunches with no effort or thought. That ad potentially that hook is everyone wants to trade for my kids' lunches, but they won't do it. Landing page potentially is a quiz to understand what they want. Gather information, number of agent offer first free week of lunch snacks. So thinking about the TikTok framework in that sense, how quickly we can kind of go through it. And it was a pretty cool example that I think if there's a brand out there looking to bring this to life, this is specific. I know who my creator is going to be. I know the type of content. I know what needs to be shot. And this is a, just a couple lines uh, overall. So I hope it makes sense on, on that front. And then we kind of get into the research phase, which took a lot of time, effort, and a lot of people to kind of give us how we should do it. Because at our size, we're trying to go fast. Then we go into the overall research, uh, the the deeper research phase that I have. And so a lot of this stuff can be found within TikTok itself. Uh, the, the top ads, they've done an incredible job of allowing us to feel like we know what we're doing, where we're going on this. And so for TikTok specifically, the top ads section feels like it needs to be utilized a little bit more. And I wish Facebook did what they did here because it'll give you the trend about how it's living and where it's going. So you can see how it's being used and why it's being used at what speed it's being used at. And it's, again, something that I wish Facebook had quite a while. I don't think we'd spend too much time on the creators area because I do find out that these people are a little bit more expensive than us and their briefing process is not as clear. So we don't like to play too deeply in this space. Um, but we do believe heavily within the hashtags of where it's going purely by industry because we'll be able to find it, especially when summer turned pretty. And I like that we were able to use that trend or to create content specific around this area that allowed us to feel more comfortable showcases nothing too much to talk about here it does provide some inspiration but you have better off finding other other types of content from some of the competitors that you have in the space but they do do a great breakdown and it feels good to, to kind of be featured here if i can't get to that area the creators i tend to find the cost a little bit more so we do a different approach go to twitter um, and i have a full process on this and we talk specifically what we want so if i'm looking for a specific type of customer or a specific type of content creator we'll go go live and on, on twitter itself there's a lot of people now might not always be quality but it will give you a lot to surface and a lot to search through especially with the team and options is, is what you need and so we gave an entire workflow of how this is done and where it needs to go to which i'll link it for you guys before they kind of cut me off here um, and then we have a type form where people can can, can submit and that way we're able to kind of intake it and it looks pretty seamlessly like this with that overall brief that we kind of give them. So this doesn't change. This is something that we were taught how to do and where to do it, but the unique value propositions, we have this linked as well. Um, so make sure you guys get a lot of this stuff here. And there's two, two core tools that I would recommend that we all kind of play with. Uh, this way it is for desktop and it's easier for you to track and find those that are creating content on the, on the real side, not necessarily on the make believe side, but.